Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Naomi and today I'm going to teach you how to do Dhanurasana or bow pose. So bow pose is a belly down back bend in which your belly is on the ground and your feet and your hands are away from the floor and you're reaching for your feet with your hands. Now it's a really fantastic back bend that requires a good amount of strength and a lot of stretch and some flexibility. But it's also one of those poses that you either really love or you really don't love because it can be a little bit challenging for a lot of people. So what I want to do today is give you a little bit more foundational awareness in this pose so that you feel more confident and capable when you try it. I also want to show you a few ways that you can modify it or play with it or sort of support yourself better in this pose so that you feel a little bit more stable. And I want to show you a few ways that you can take some of the potential pain out of this pose. Now this is not a pose that will injure you or necessarily hurt you, but there are things that you can do to protect your body a little bit more so that you're less likely to feel some of those common discomforts in this pose, primarily in your low back and your knees. Okay, so you will only need a blanket for this particular practice, so make sure that you have a blanket. And I'm going to show you a few things that you can do to warm up for this pose as well. So just know that there's going to be a lot going on, but it's going to give you a lot more support and a lot more knowledge moving forward with this pose in the future. So all that said, the first thing that I want to do is just show you what this pose looks like and some of the areas of your body that you're working on in the pose. So Dhanurasana is a pose where you're lying on your belly. And I do have a blanket down for me because um, I'm on concrete and the concrete's kind of hard. You don't necessarily need a, a blanket underneath you unless you have more sensitive pelvis or pubic bone. Okay, but you're on your belly. You're going to bend your knees. You reach for your feet. Okay, and then legs lift up, chest lifts up. Right? This is the basic form of the pose. Okay, and then you can let that go. So the action of the pose, the, the way that you are getting into this pose is from strength in your upper back and your shoulders and strengthen your legs, okay? But there's also a fair amount of stretching happening, like a pulling out and lengthening, okay? So the first thing that I wanna do to give you a little bit more support is to warm up your upper body. Okay? And one of the best ways to warm up your upper body is on your belly, okay? So you're gonna be propped up on your forearms and you're gonna do something that I like to call a sliding cobra. So slide your left hand in, this is just to warm up and prepare. Okay, like you're going into cobra pose, and then slide it back out. Slide your right hand in in exactly the same way. Slide back out. Slide your left hand in. Slide back out. Slide your right hand in. Slide back out. Okay, one more time with the left. Slide back out. One more time with the right. Slide back out. Now, slide both in and slide back out. Now, here's the key. You've got to keep your legs really strong. So squeeze your legs in, make them powerful. Slide both hands in, and then slide your hands out. Now you're going to add to this. Slide both hands in, lift your hands up, extend your arms straight back, bend your elbows again, put your hands down, slide back out. So we're going to do that one more time because I want you to feel the power in your upper back. Now if you start to feel your low back bothering you, just stay a little lower down. So you're going to slide in, hands go up, extend back and out, right? So you don't have to pull quite up so high. And we'll talk a little bit more about the low back in just a sec, okay? Just slide your hands in, lift your hands, extend your arms straight back, bend them back in so your hands are hovering, put them back down, slide back out, and then rest, okay? So that's warming up your upper body for Cobra, and I think it's the simplest, most basic way to just warm up your upper body there. Now let's talk about lower body. Let's so bend your left knee, Reach for the outside of your left foot with your left hand. Okay, now ordinarily, if you were on your belly and doing a quad stretch, you might pull your foot in towards your hip. And that's a great thing to do too. You can do that right now while I'm still talking if you want. Okay, but for Dhanurasana, Dhanurasana is a pose, bow pose, is actually where you're holding onto the outside of your foot and extending. Okay, so if you're propped on your right forearm, Extend your foot into your hand. You can also hold on to your ankle. We'll talk about that grip as well. Extend your foot into your hand and just lengthen. Okay, and then release it and go to the second side. Reach for your right foot, for your right hand, and pull in, especially if you did this on the first side. If you did not, then, you know, you can just hang out or you can try it or see how it feels. But then hold on to the outside of your right foot. Spread your toes and lengthen back through your right leg. Okay, like, you're, like you want to lift your elbow, and we'll do that in a sec, but just lengthen back, and then lower your right leg down. Okay, now, 
First side again, bend your left knee. Now this time, you're gonna add to it and kick back a little bit more. So hold on to the outside of your foot or your ankle. Okay, right forearm is down and going straight forward. Okay, now as you kick back, lift your right elbow. Now you wanna make sure not to like twist. You're going straight back. So your elbow might only go up a few inches. If you have a little bit more sensitivity in your back, you can have your arms straight out and your elbow might not go very high. Okay, but the action of lifting comes from kicking back through your foot, okay, and then lower down. So the analogy that I give is if you've ever seen that movie Ratatouille, right, the animated movie where the rat was inside the chef's hat and he would pull on his hair and the chef was able to make all kinds of things that he'd never been able to make before, that's like this, okay, only for your legs, <laughs> all right? So if you're on your left arm and you bend your right knee, you reach for the outside of your foot, it's by pushing back through your leg that you are able to lift your left elbow. Okay, it's the power of your leg extending back that lifts your elbow up. So that's what you want to think, right? It's not a twist. You're going straight back and then down and then rest, okay? So now, <clears throat> now that you have those actions, I want you to give it a try, okay? Bend your knees. You can lower down and reach for your feet. Spread your toes, okay? Now, bend your elbows a little bit to help engage your upper back. Right? Imagine like what you did in that sliding cobra. And then as you kick back through your legs, lift your chest. Okay, so instead of having one arm down, you're lifting by extending back. And then lower all the way down and rest. Okay, now that is the most basic way to do Dhanurasana, right? Where you're just lifting up. Here's the thing though. If you have low back issues in this pose, Okay, what's going to happen is if your pelvis is pressing down into the floor, you're going to feel more sensitivity, more issues. So what I want you to try is this, okay? Lift your butt way up, okay? Butt way up, okay? And I'm exaggerating it quite a bit, but I want you to sort of feel how much space you can give yourself and actually how good it probably feels to be here. Like you might not want to move from here, okay? But you can't stay here. So I want you to move the top of your pelvis up. So what that means is right now, the top of your pelvis is aiming toward the floor. Move it away from the floor. Move the bottom of your pelvis down so you feel your low belly lift, okay? Then prop yourself up on your forearms and you should feel a lot of space, not a lot, but a good amount of space between your pelvis and the floor. Okay, that's the action that you wanna find in Dhanurasana, okay, in bow pose. Okay, so bend both of your knees, reach for your feet, Slide your knees in a little bit to lift your butt. So you're gonna be right on your chest, okay? Your boobs might not feel awesome if you have boobs, <laughs> no matter how big or small they are. Your chest might not feel great either. So, you know, I mean, really seriously here, right? Because you're putting all of your weight into it. It's temporary. Okay, so butt is up. Now, move the top of your pelvis up, bottom of your pelvis down. Okay, as you do that, lift your chest. And you want to try to keep repeating that to feel more power and control in your core. Good, and then lower all the way back down. So that's one way to sort of work a little bit more on supporting yourself in this pose when you're on your belly, is trying to find that top of the pelvis up, bottom of the pelvis down, that lift, even as you have to bear weight in your pelvis, okay? Um, and it's a little bit tricky, right? So one of the ways that you can practice it is on your knees. Okay, um, and this is just a way to sort of get more familiar with the action. Okay, so it's like you're tilting forward, right? Your butt's gonna go back, top of the pelvis goes forward. Now, move the top of your pelvis up, bottom of your pelvis down, so you're creating more of a neutral pelvis. And use that as you do that to lift your chest. Now, if you're here in camel pose, right, you could reach back for your ankles, right? Or you could just keep your hands at your hips, but that's the action. Top of the pelvis goes forward first, just to get that space, then you're gonna move it back. Top of the pelvis goes back, bottom of the pelvis goes down. It's a good tone in your core, and you use that here. And by the way, this is just like Dhanurasana too, it's just like bow pose, only on your knees. Okay, so that's one way to get a little bit more comfortable with that action, so that you can replicate it on your belly. Okay, now, <laughs> if that's not working, you can try another thing. You can take that blanket that you have, okay, Roll it up into a tight little roll, okay? And then you would place 
this roll underneath your pelvis. And you want it to be like right underneath your pelvic bones, like the top ones. And that's gonna give you a little bit more lift through your pelvis, okay? Now there's another way to do this. I'll show that to you too. This is not necessarily comfortable for your belly. Good news, you're not gonna be here for a long time, okay? But here, same thing is gonna be true. You're gonna reach back for your feet. And then you can kick back and lift up, okay? And that gives me a lot more space when I lift up. Now this is not for everyone, not everybody's gonna love this, but it is a way to alleviate some of that stress in your low back because you're propping up your low back, right? You're creating a lot more support there, okay? Now before we move on, because there's another way to use this, let's talk about um, whether you are reaching for your feet or your ankles and what the difference is, okay? The difference between reaching for your feet and for your ankles is how you lift away from the ground, okay? And what you're using to lift. So. If you're reaching for your feet, generally speaking, you're gonna lift your legs first, right? Because that's extension, okay? Now, once you lift your legs, you can lift your chest up. It's like you're rolling it up away from the floor. So nice. And then lower down, okay? Now, if you're reaching for your ankles, that's gonna give you more power, right? And it's like kicking yourself up and really using your shoulders more to come away from the floor. So, if I reach for my ankles instead of my feet, I'm gonna flex my feet instead of point them or floint them as you were doing. And that kick back really comes as much from my shoulders as it does my legs. And it's a much more powerful way of getting into the pose, but that with that power comes great responsibility. No, with that power, <laughs> once a comic book fan, always a comic book fan. Yes, I'm a nerd, um, yoga nerd, and also a comic book nerd. Anyway, um, I like superheroes, I mean, who doesn't, right? Anyway, I'm getting way off topic. So the point is, is that with that power in your legs, it can sort of bypass some of those subtleties of creating more support in your pelvis. So you gotta kind of watch that one a little bit, okay? So either reaching for the top of your feet or your ankles, that's gonna, that's gonna give you a different way of getting into the pose, okay? Now the last place that you can put the blanket, I and mean, you can put it a couple of different places, but another way to put it is a little bit farther down, to help you lift your legs. So it's gonna be right at the top of your thighs. And this also, it's just really nice. It's gonna lift your butt. But this helps me lift my legs up. And then the action of my chest, it's not gonna go quite as high. Okay, but this is much more about getting extension through my legs. Okay, again, just like the one underneath your pelvis, right, where it's a little bit further forward, it's an acquired taste. Not everybody loves it, right? So this is the one that's further forward. But it is a way to practice the pose a little bit differently to help you access different parts of your body. Okay, now here's the last thing that I want to talk about. And the last thing I want to talk about are where your knees are. Okay, now generally speaking, it's going to feel a little bit more stable for your knees if your knees are pointed down and are in line with your hips. What tends to happen, particularly when you hold on to the tops of your feet, is that the knees want to go out to the sides. Okay, the knees going out to the sides can create all kinds of issues, right? It can tweak your knees, it can tweak your low back a little bit, it can. Doesn't mean it will, but it can. So one of the ways that you can avoid that is by rolling your knees in, right, and lifting your butt a little bit, okay? Just like you did before. Then squeezing your knees together to lift up and trying to keep your knees in line, okay? Take a full breath in here, full breath out, and then let it go. Okay, so working on your knees is tricky because you can't see them. They're a little bit harder to feel until you're in it. Um, one of the best ways that you can do is to take a picture of yourself if you're able or to do it in front of a mirror or any number of other things, but that's something that you can do there and it's gonna give you just a little bit more insight into where your knees are. Um, you can play with it one-legged as well and that's gonna give you a little bit of an idea too. And it might just be something where you bring your knees together for a while and try that. Right? And knees together is going to be a lot more difficult for your shoulders. Okay, you're not going to lift up very high. Okay, but it does give you a little bit more awareness of where your knees are, and you can start inching them out. Okay? So, whew, that is Dhanurasana and how to do it. And hopefully, just a few ways that you can modify it, that you can work with some supportive props and some supportive actions to create more freedom and power in your body. 
Um, again, this is a pose that not everybody loves and that's okay, but having the understanding of it to make it a little bit more, um, or I'll say a little less intimidating, a little less impossible, can make you feel like if not today, but someday, you will be able to do this pose without pain, without drama, without massive frustration, and maybe even enjoy it a little bit. So. Let me know what you think of Dhanurasana bow pose and this video in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for joining me for this practice, and I look forward to seeing you back on the mat again really soon. Until then, bye.